That's okay. <laughs> yeah, radio mobile. Well, at least you got a good version of yeah. Radio Mobile on your computer now. <laughs> well, let's see here. One last. <laughs> so we've been doing something we don't need to do. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, but you might as well first. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what I have, you know, downloaded with it. Uh, well, it gets what you need. It's not, uh, you got farther than me out it here. It can take a while, but, but let's go through it. Here. Okay, the mouse is over on the table. Um, so there's two things. You, you must have gone through and uh, accepted the Google Terms of Service, because it looks like you got the Google Map integration there, I think. Yeah, I, you know... This is one sure of those, looks like this it. This is one of those products where I, you know, keep clicking until I yeah, can't, you do. can't figure out how to get back. You have it. Okay. Uh, so basically the way this program works is you set up networks. And these networks use the Longley Rice propagation model to simulate your wireless links depending on what you put in. And the nice thing about these programs is you can actually use a real link to, to help inform the way that you simulate. Because these three boxes right here insert a certain amount of statistical loss. And so when you have a link and you say, this is the equipment on either side, and it doesn't quite line up, you can tie it in with that or with antenna feed line loss or something. But then once you have it modeled well, it generally carries over into other places, unless there's like trees that aren't accounted for or something. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good at simulating. Um, so we're trying to test for Dover Lamp. Yeah, that's a fair number of assumptions here. Generally, when you do the uh, when you do the simulation, you want to have this be more like a channel that you're using. So it'd be okay. like. Uh, what is it centered on? 23, 23, 23, 23 97. 97. So it would be like 2392 to 2402. And uh, yeah. OK. And you build systems from the parameters that you input here. And using those, then you you know where you have your, uh, oh, I guess I can see here, membership node, this is pen, okay. Let's see what we have under system 10. Oh, no, I'm sorry, system 10. I mean, I, I just clicked on System 10 because it was there. Okay. So let's do this. Let's make System 4. No, let's see. I always forget about how this is done when I set it up. Right. Each of these systems on the left represents one hardware combination. So if we make this a Rocket M2... We know that's, I think it's, is it 26 or 28 dBm? I forget. The I think 20, the 600 milliwatts is 27 dBm, 28, let's see. Um, um, uh, let's say 27. That's not going to hurt. Uh, uh -huh. Line loss, Omni. 20. 20 dB is, 20 dBm is 100 milliwatts, so yes. another Six 26 is. is 600 milliwatts, so it's 20. Yes. So it's 26. Okay. <laughs> um, and generally, this, you can change it at the system. It's easiest just to use an Omni antenna, and I haven't really designed antennas that match the, 
the ubiquity okay. sectors yet. Mm -hmm. But you just have to remember when you're doing your... It's going to be better than what an Omni will show you. Yes. Yeah. So the Omni says everything is within 3 dBm of the gain. Mm -hmm. So you just limit the, the sweep to what you want, and then you can, in that way, control okay. where you have your reception. Then you don't have to worry about uh, incorrect just false antennas. Let's make this a uh, M2 Roco. Now I know those are 23 dBm. And I believe the antenna on that, that's not exactly it. It's like 6.65, something like that. So you have systems here. You can save them in a file. Or you can just. Uh, or you can just leave them in your network here, and each each unit can belong to a bunch of networks, and in each network it has to be a system type. And so we can make. Oh, let's see. Let's say he has an M2 loco, and let's say Tier Lake is a. Tier Lake is higher than 1.8 meters off the ground. It's probably what, like 13? And you're probably 4 or 5. Where, where is the. Uh, we're at about 30 feet. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, yeah we're actually. <coughs> you're on top of the pine tree? Or? No, it's uh, up on right above your 900 megahertz. Oh, okay. So oh. It's, it's, it's 35 feet probably. All right, that's pretty good it's then. 27 to the top of the roof and then. It's got to be another 8 to 10 feet above that. So after you've defined the network and you've added the systems and you've added the members, you can do things like look at the link between them. And let's see how accurate this is. Well, that's not as good as... I don't think I have... Yeah. I wonder if we have a directional antenna on one of these. Let's swap. Okay, we don't have the ability. We've got the nano station. Oh, that's the nano. That's not the right. Yeah. There's the difference. All right. have it on a very restrictive, uh, if we look here at the parameters, 70% of situations, 90% of the time, 90% of locations. Um, well, there's several factors, but so let's go back and make this right. This is, I want to say it's 26 dBm. For the nano station? Yeah. Or is it 28? 11. Oh, the, the gain, yes. The gain is 11 dBi. Uh, it's somewhere around 26 for output power. Okay, which is what, 600 or 600 milliwatts? Oh, the power there says 400 milliwatts. I see right beside it, transmit power watts, 400 oh, yeah, milliwatts. Oh, yeah, Yeah. So we want another... Oh, you know what? This is 28. 28 comes out to be 600 milliwatts. Okay. Yep, and then this one is 26. And that one is? I think. Okay. Uh, but those are close because they're not completely accurate. So let's make this uh, what it actually is. Uh, and since it's Omni, we don't need to worry about the antenna direction. Now let's look at how the link changed. It was 79 before between them, and now it is... I don't think that's a 12 decimal antenna, too. I think that's like a 16 or a, the sector up there on the rocket. On the rocket, is one tw it's a 120 degree sector. I, th I think you told me it was a 15 dBi okay. antenna. So okay. let's go back to network properties, systems. Let's 
turn your vision. Oh, yeah. This is where I changed something. And the thing that I changed was the mode of variability. You had it on spot. If we go back to that, that'll improve it as well. Uh, now we're at 72 in one direction and 74 in the other. Where are you reading those numbers? That is right here, RX oh, okay. level, 72. And look in the other direction, okay. 74. But that is... when you're usually when I'm looking at the uh, the network to do capacity planning I do something along those lines and that's still more uh, restrictive than you have there I wonder what we're you're probably above what it sees here as trees in between. And that we can test that by yeah, see once you get over that, see how it goes. Once yeah, the trees get out down. of the picture, it gets right. closer to what you're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. So I don't <laughs> I know we're not at a hundred feet, so Yeah. But it's uh Okay. It may be exactly not exactly placed on the Tear Lake side. <coughs> anyway, that's one uh, way to get started and then say right here somewhere out in Copper City we could have a uh, or Centennial Heights let's look around where Sands is I clicked over there I hit use cursor position now I'm pulling the map out and let's add Google road maps so we can just see what Actually, let's do this. Let's zoom in there. So I've done, there. I've selected somewhere around Centennial Heights. I hit F8, drop to maybe 10 kilometers instead of 50. And then let's add the roads so we can see where we are here. Okay, there's Centennial Heights and right about there is the, uh, yeah. So we have that. Now we go control U for unit. And I don't know this one is tall enough for that. Yeah, WEH key change zone. position. Okay. Now we go back to the network. Make him a member of the network. Give him hmm, give him a rocket too. Okay. Let's say he can get 10 meters up. And what does system mean above that? Uh, the, that's where you define the systems that that exist. Rocket. Okay. So then there's that. Now we hit F8, we zoom back out. Add the roads just for something to look at. And then let's look instead of, well, first of all, I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah. But I bet you're like, well. Okay. There we go. Ooh, just. Eh, we just drew it there too. I mean, I, but you you didn't see it till you were up on the pole, did you? Right. I had I was up on the pole facing this way. So this is fairly accurate. If you see eighty six, you're not going to see it in real life. And we're not at twenty two meters up there. We're probably at around. That, while it doesn't perfectly mirror real life, 
you could tweak it and uh, make it mirror real life a little bit better. But uh, that allows you to have a view of the capacity, and you could say, um, let's see what Tier Lake can see if we just have a mobile unit that is. terminal. We'll consider that it's uh, just an M2 loco. And it's on somebody's van, so it's only like two, three meters. Now if you look at Tier Lake and see what uh, mobile can see, because you have to be able to talk both ways. not do all 360 degrees. You can see that hillside over by the oil change place where mm -hmm. you were. There's the Wow, there's not much behind that hill. That's right. It does go up more still. And of course, outside of the 120 degree sector, whatever the reality is, it's this <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's finished. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Just kill the ball. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's let's redo that with the idea in mind that uh, it's pointed at, I don't know, 60 degrees, so we go from 0 to 120. And uh, I like actually style where you can see where it's just a, uh, a slam dunk as far as signal levels go. Because if there's one thing it's good at, it's actually knowing line of sight. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna kind of conservative on it. So, so you see that right here you're going to fall off and be several decibels down and even more so. It's, it's probably pointed more. Uh, it's probably pointed more toward 90 degrees or so. Mm -hmm real life, but uh, that's that's one way to just look at a single node. Uh, there is the combined Cartesian radio coverage, and that is uh, a way to see what kind of rough coverage you're looking at from several several towers okay. being possible. It doesn't have the interference mode because it's several towers, and so if you really wanted to look at this in a rigorous way, you would do transmit, receive, put it in an image editing program, and just take where it's both of them. And you would have a subset that, that would give you... Okay, so like GIS where you're only looking at... Yeah, GIS. exactly. Okay. It computes for each node what its coverage would be to the mobile unit. And that's just the mobile unit going around following the terrain. And there's something off with one of those settings because that seems like an awful lot of coverage for mobile, for mobile to, uh, to your unit here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty sure you're not getting <laughs> Tear Lake to the backside of Gratiot Lake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. There's a, <laughs> something wrong there, but. Uh, no, it's the areas left out that you have coverage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. That would be more accurate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you can uh, also just point by point on the towers say, look, we'll leave the pattern for Tear Lake in, and then we'll run the other one and overlay them on each other. There's a lot of things you can do with that. Uh, as far as setting this software up, 
nice things to remember are uh, to do right here, download from the internet, and keep a local copy. That right. is handy so you don't have to redo that. Same with Google Maps. Just make sure you're caching the stuff mm -hmm. so you never have to do it again. Um, I understand that there are some ubiquity antenna pattern files, but uh, I don't have them today. Okay. Other than that, this is really nice software, even for modeling a two-meter repeater or non-microwave stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I don't really any questions? And the only other thing I got is: is there a better way? Standing on top of the 315 and holding that dish and saying, I think I must over here. Is there a yes, there is. If you have accurate positioning, the nice thing is if you look at a link here. Well, I mean, okay, sometimes the real world is not the simulation. Right. So you'll wind up with something that makes you have to tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you get a good idea if you say Tear Lake to stands. You look and you see azimuth 67.46 degrees. Elevation. That's enough that it's just flat. Just have it level. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, that's probably one of the most useful things of radio modal deluxe. You don't have to as much just say, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like it might be over that way. And now, least, the other thing you might be able to do is on the uh, nodes themselves with the laptop hooked up to them. Yes. Okay, look at that chart of signal versus noise and yeah, see how you can peek it. Does the Arden have uh, the beeping like the Ubiquiti does? Not that I'm aware of. They really ought to add that because that's so handy when you can just put something in your, like a Bluetooth yep. in your ear and not. Yeah, start moving it and listen yeah. to it. Yep. I don't think it has it. Okay. Uh, but I don't. Is there a place to ask for feature requests? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be... Yeah, because basically it should be pretty straightforward. You're just taking that chart yep. and putting it out audio. Just a little bit of JavaScript, probably. Yeah. You could probably even just look at the way Ubiquity does it and mm -hmm. in an afternoon have the same thing. I'll send them that. Um, but yeah, that's... The, we actually used for a link from Republic to... Uh, Little Lake. We had a 5 gigahertz link that we were only able to establish by using the radio mobile azimuth. And uh, the techs who were out there swore that it just would never work. And when we had the right azimuth, then boom, 65 signal. And these were 40 decibel antennas, so they were they were big dishes, and mm -hmm. we just had to very carefully. And they only have like a degree and a half of before it's dropped off to nothing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. So, so how did you, how did you get the the direction? How, how you're, you're up there with a compass? Compass next to a metal pole. Yeah. You're no. Compass <laughs> no. Actually, uh, you're on your compass on your phone. Doesn't he finds something in the phone? There is one. There is one in the phone to be able to use it. Yeah. Okay. And it's pretty good. Yeah. Or you can you can stand away from the tower mm -hmm. and say here's and then just shoot at that piece yeah. of yeah. whatever the corner. Pick a landmark. Stick a cone down there. And yeah, okay. that's even better way to do it. More accurate. Yeah, the guys just aim it, start walking. And, and we also had to make sure that it was level too. This wasn't circular polarization. Uh, it was only vertical actually, and mm -hmm. we had to. That made a difference. But fortunately, those big dishes have really fine adjustments, so that's. Uh, on those ones. Yeah. Those are good ones to have. Have yeah. you two guys met? No. no. Okay. This is Matt. This Matt. is John. He did his previous link. Uh, I worked for Shorewaves. Oh, okay. First job I had. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, first boss I had. Uh, that's what everybody says about you. He's a character, yeah. <laughs> This is extremely helpful just watching. Yeah. Click on a couple of things. I mean, it's going to. There is a learning curve in the program. Yeah. Sure. If, 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 if we can all spend a couple of weeks and then maybe.
gather for a cup of coffee somewhere and go, all right, you know, where are we at? Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about it, too, is, you know, when you save this, it's where you save it, in the network file and in the units file and in another one. And actually for our WISP, we, for our 477 forms, we populate it just from a CSV and then throw it up and do signal cool. estimation as well. what you want to save. The pictures don't matter as much. Um, some of the settings are in the Windows registry. The, uh, like the directory that you save files in. That doesn't matter as much on, on Windows, but running it under Wine can make it kind of tough to move it from directories if you're running it under Linux. It runs really well under Linux, BSD, OS 10. Uh, it's not a very complicated program underneath, apparently. So it just takes Visual Basic. Okay, yep. let's okay. let me click on that. Let's see what Chris had to say. Oh. Oh. Well, that's a good follow-up. Well, it's not like he's actually fighting the fire. <laughs> okay, Randy recommended the W U P E E N Western Upper Michigan Upper Peninsula Emergency Data Network, mm -hmm. and I heard no arguments. Sounds so good. That's kind of where we are. Mm -hmm. Defined it. Okay, tier one. I'm going to go from Houghton County to Keweenaw County. To get to Grant Township, you're going to have to go either through the new Verizon Tower, if they ever get it up, or over the uh, Mountain Lodge Tower. That's just so much of a drop there. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the possibility is we maybe get on the Mountain Lodge Tower. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, or, you know, there's another way uh, that would make sense, and that would be through the Grant Township Water Department. Might be going around the horn a bit, but we're looking at that for, for billions. Okay. In case the, who knows what the Mountain Lodge is going to be a year from now. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they just borrowed a bunch of money, didn't they? They're defaulted. The whole county is. Oh. They're not getting grants because they're not making Keep their... Keep county? Yeah. Okay. Get voted out. <laughs> <laughs> The, yeah, the water itself is toast. Yeah. Yeah. That's the I knew that when they built that conference center that they would never, yeah. would never pay it back. Yeah. But if, unfortunately, it's dragging the whole county down with it. Mm -hmm. so. um, well, there'll be a bailout somewhere. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. And Chris, Chris is, I think, looking at reactivating the EOC in okay. Memorial. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we got that 150 foot tower there. Yeah. That we should be able to work with. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that, that'll fill that in the would, gaps well. That would yeah. that would negate having to use Stan's <coughs> property. Uh, no, because um, if we want to get to Stan down in the valley, I think we have to be up. Well. Yeah. Well, who wants to run the analysis? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Depends on where we you know, get as, on as an account. example, it, uh, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt because I don't know much about what I'm doing. But from Tear Lake, if I shoot up to the clubhouse at about 60 feet, I can have success. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you get 60 feet? Huh? How did you get 60 feet at the clubhouse, or was this simulation? Simulation. Oh no! 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 <laughs> no? Uh, the tower is 55 feet from what I understand. Yeah. Okay. There's a bar across the top of the tower, and but they have the nano bridge on there, not the nano station. We could not get the nano bridge to hit Tier Lake from the top of that tower. 
My nano station, however, that's up on the mast, we put it up on the mast oh, under, you did. underneath the VHF. Now we. I'm at the bottom going, please, <laughs> please don't fall off the tower, key. That, that's the old, that's the old tower. That's that old green one, yeah. He goes up there like care. a rabbit. That's you don't care. <laughs> but but this is but this we're talking about maybe putting your bones aren't made out of rubber though. Well, that thing's... Yeah. <laughs> well, we have an the idea there. So <laughs> anyhow, the, the yeah. nano station just to make this long story short. Yeah. The nano station could see down here. I don't know how well, but the red light comes on. If you look at the ubiquity node over here, when the red light is on, it has mesh. You okay. do have the benefit of channel negative two as well. Yes, is, yeah. There's nobody else making noise. There. Okay. Now, so when I did the analysis, if you, if you, he's to your lake, here's the clubhouse, and here's over in Lorium. There's a ridge between you and Lorium. Yeah. And that 150 foot tower, unless we're way at the top, we can't get there from Tier Lake. Right. And that would be a long mm -hmm. shot anyway to get there. I mean, Almost to accept slightly reduced data rates and have more hops. Yeah. And okay. have them backed up on, on battery power where mm -hmm. you're not. And that also gives a little more resilience, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. One of the things he doesn't have on Tier 1 that might be looked at is the old D&M bank in Hancock, whatever that's called now. That building there, yeah. yeah. The big glass. Yeah, bank. yeah or someplace right. downtown. Yeah. And Hancock, I mean, I think that might be higher than Lodge. Well, I'm sure it's higher than Lodge. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lodge right now is, has, uh, Michigan Tech, uh, uh Hark members on it right now, so, okay. mm -hmm. um, going up on First Merit Bank is feasible, um, it's a good possibility. Uh, well, if you do it from an EOC point of view. Yeah. You know, yeah. Chris goes as, as you know, mm -hmm. official capacity talks to them. And two, it's, it's spectrum that's not going to be used for anything else. Right. Yeah, no. At Aspirus, he could go hit Aspirus up um, and Portage. Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't be a problem. There's even a tower by Portage. Um, that tower is a I don't know. range, though. Range communication? Yeah. I don't. They're not too. My phone calls. No, I've tried getting on the eight eight tower. Okay. Okay. Oh, they're going to do a survey on it. First. They're going to do a survey on it first, and I talked to guys that I used to work with, mm -hmm. and uh, this new guy that's in there, this uh, Johnny Diaz, I think it is. Uh, they're saying everybody's bailing on him. But uh, I, I don't have as much optimism as I. <clears throat> I had before I sent the request in. Yeah. But the guy did respond to me. Now, another tower could be the the Arcadian Tower on Quincy Hill. Um, Tech owns that tower. In that's the 8 Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm trying for. Okay. Um, that would be a feasible tower possibly to put mesh up on. Mm -hmm. um, again, uh, I believe Tech owns that, so uh, that would be the best bet. It's a long ways out, but it would help fill in around. Uh, that has good coverage. I use my DMR up in Lorium off, off that tower. Okay. So yeah. it, that has some really good, great uh, reach. Yeah. Okay, now which one was that again? The D88. 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 Ah, the D88. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How high are they up on the D88? They're at the crossbar, I think. Yeah. At the crossbar, yeah. okay. Yeah, because we moved the 88 antenna higher when the new antenna went up, and that made a difference in the footprint. Oh, I hit it pretty easy. Huh? I hit it pretty easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, can you scroll down? How about? That's the uh, bank building in Lorian. Okay, that's with that 150 foot tower, it's, it's in the basement. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I believe it's all under. Sure. The big status. TBR could just be Raspberry Pi. I mean, we don't, we're not doing any real telco stuff, so. No. 
You could be on a tower somewhere. It, doesn't oh, have it would be great to have like an access to the EOC though. I think he's still watching um, us on your. Or oh, okay. Like say when we have the. Um, copper dog. Well, not only the copper dog. That would be one beneficial use. Uh, the great bear chase would be another ben- beneficial mm-hmm. use. Um, uh, or when we're running the Aries. Mm-hmm. The EOC any, and launch will be a challenge itself. The any Aries event access to the EOC. We have nothing high. Uh, look up Dan Cordell's. Oh, yeah. oh, the fu- be siren. Because as long as we have the communications Maybe. in there, in that app, in that building, yeah, that way everybody's staying warm. It's only limited to a few people, and yeah. then the rest of them, if we we can run some comms out of the trailer, then spread <laughs> back short to the straw. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I could do that too. Well, we're saying twin. Oh, twin lights. Yeah. Uh, just thinking that uh, there's probably a tower up at Tri Mountain there that we could get on. That would be still on the back side of uh, behind the airport there. No, well, the other Cat WGGO tower up there too. Well, that's right. Four hundred and fifty yeah. feet. Yeah, that's a little bit better than what we're on up there. <laughs> Yeah, I, again, getting on there, we are going to have to yeah. kind of pull in some favors or something. Just uh, grab a solar panel. And <laughs> yeah. I climbed the tower on the inside, and it's kind of tough to take a go like that to hold the solar panel as you're coming up. <laughs> well, you have the solar panel on the ground. No. Oh, okay. First thing up is a pulley. Second thing up is a rope. <laughs> yeah, there. I can pull it through the rope. Huh? Yeah. yeah. And then you pull it up to get out. Well, any tower we put up, we'll put the pulley on it permanently. <laughs> that works for a while. Yeah. Tally <laughs> elements kill it. <laughs> Just like that nice big pulley that's on the roof of the 315. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Only we were able to use that a couple times. Mm-hmm. Well, a good in concept, but every other, you only used it. It's for notes, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't bring my glasses in. Can you hold it over there? Yeah, well, this is the this is yeah. the first time I've been able to do this. Yeah. Uh, what I've done here is I have a uh, air gateway uh-huh. on my nano station on the mesh now. Oh, okay. Okay. And so I don't have to have my RJ45 for the mesh plugged in here. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what a difference. Because it used to be that I couldn't get to my printer. We're all done. All done? Yeah, we're done. Mm-hmm. Okay. You could have more you We were just no, discussing he, the he idea. Have one. We were just we were just discussing the uh, we the were. problem we're gonna have for Berga County, at least for the Lawns EOC. And because uh, they got that on the list. And uh, so we're just thinking out loud here and exactly and how we might be able to serve that getting on that uh, six seven tower might be with some sort of node might be the way to do to get a, a direct connection to the EOC in lawns because you know in lawns that you're in a hill or you know you got hills on both sides mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah. where is that EOC at the lawns fire hall could we bounce off Richard Brooks Possibly. Well, I, I think there's a good link between Lance and. No, I won't say that. I, I looked at. I can't remember if I, if I was looking Herman to the uh, tower in Duncan. Okay. Or from Lance to the six seven. I thought I did both, but uh, not if, sure. If you know where the courthouse is in Lance on a, on the big hill, 
down by the waterfront? No. Uh, it's right in the center of town. Okay. It's over by the jail, right? Uh, where the jail used to be. Okay, yeah. 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 Just right on the front there, looking towards the, the, the bay, more or less. Okay. <clears throat> Next to the old frackies. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's in the hole. Oh, wow, that was a frack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That used to be. Yeah. yeah. But we do have that tower in Berga too, where we we think we might be able to stick something on there and send it across. But I've got something, we've got something cooking possibly at putting at Selkies, okay. and that's a little bit. That's maybe 80 feet higher than where we're at with the 440 repeater right now, mm -hmm. just ground level wise. Yeah. But if we were to erect the tower, you know, 60 feet or something, whatever it may take to get above the trees, we'd have a better shot. Mm -hmm. You know. But there is, you know, we've really got a. We can look at northern maybe if we can get northern. <laughs> well, yeah. If we can get them to I'm actually. A baseball bat, find a guy that won't answer. Yeah. Well, that's Eric <laughs> Smith. <laughs> you know? Eric Smith. I don't know if you know him. Not happening. No way. Never. You know? Well, he's he does. He I does do a lot of that. I don't know if it's the same Eric Smith. Uh, he runs he a, a communication stuff for northern. No, it's not the same one. Though. Okay. Oh. Well, anyway, he they've got that tower there. They've they got it on the 38 Hill in Berga. It was a possible site at one point in time for the 6-7. Yeah, we were looking at that. They mm -hmm. wanted to charge me. But that was a showstopper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they've got it there. They've got nothing do, going on with it at all. Mm -hmm. There was a lease that I think was supposed to come up here. I don't know if they lost the, the property or the lease or nothing like that. So mm -hmm. we might want to, we could check into that with Parkla's and see if they've heard anything or have any information because that there would be a perfect mm -hmm. point to, to mm -hmm. at least get something on. Get something up, up down there, yeah. Okay. And then Eric's excuse last time around was something about possibly putting WiMAX in the area. But, the, but in the grapevines, they probably ain't going to mess with that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were looking at that for the Limax uh, a year ago, probably, I think. Yeah, that's about the time when he was... We might still do something out there, but it'd be with LTE this time. It wouldn't be with Limax. Because we have that 35 mile with 2.5 spectrum, mm -hmm. and that does make a big difference. Stick around the new AT&T tower in Barrier. <laughs> They they actually seem like they're able to work with you a little bit. They are in telling that they're working with us. Well, this is Diamond Tower LLC. This is a. I don't know the name of it. I they, just know it's a third party tower company around. Yeah, so. they might. I think they got one up here. But anyway, they they quoted us. I think two hundred bucks a month for the four forty repeater. But was that covering power? It's covering everything. Okay. Everything. But in comparison to American Tower. And what's the other company that's floating around? Vertical the, Bridge. Vertical Bridge. Yeah, I guess they were another one. Mm -hmm. um, there's one more company. Um, their towers are mostly out in the Covington area. SBA. Um, SBA gave us a fair price of about 300 bucks a month. But American Tower said $3,600 a month on yeah, that cool. one in Herman. It, it's gone up because it was a thousand when I checked on it a few years ago oh, yeah. over by Covington yeah. on one of those towers. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. 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 For a non profit group, I just. Well, <laughs> the absurdity of that is you would have no problem financing a 400 foot tower for that. Right. 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 Exactly. Well, that's and the way it's going to Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that's a, my sentiment was well, geez, I'll go to the bank. Pull out twenty thousand dollars on a loan and pay the loan payment. Yeah, you know, for two hundred bucks a month or whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly. you'd be a lot better off than well, yeah, giving them serious. the money and, yeah. you know, yeah. they're not even probably familiar with the area or anything like that. They just know, well, we got a tower here. And well, right, yeah. right. But the thing is, is you know, that Marquette County for many years they they they're on an American Tower. We're on an American Tower. Mm -hmm. There's many other clubs that are on around American Towers. Mm -hmm. So, who did you talk to? You know, across the 
Well, I, I did not have a real point of contact other than to call in. Right. Well, that's the yeah, thing. I, I can't then, remember if I got yeah. the tower number over yeah. there and the, you know, the telephone number of who's in charge of it. Well, it's not even the same company anymore. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. See, when AT and T or Verizon owned it, they're a little more open. Mm -hmm. But since a third party person or company came into play, it's a money making scheme until that lease or whatever yeah. uh, goes up. Or, or goes out the window because they, it's only X amount of years, you know. Yeah. Just like the the state tower technically is managed not by the state 100 percent, but it, it's managed through a, a third the party. Fees come from to get on them, yeah. Right, and right. They're pretty steep themselves. Yeah, because so. American Tower said, "Well, we got towers all over the place. That's one in Herman. You know, we also take care of the state police tower there." I said, "Oh, well, great. Well, I'll just go on there because we got the the, the fees waived." Yeah. Well, how do you got that? Well, because, you know, this is emergency operation stuff, and sure. and the state mandated FEMA mandated it, and this is what we got. Oh, well, gee, well, that sounds like a good idea. Well, of course. Yeah. No. Of course it does. <laughs> I guess, you know, one of the things I'm thinking, and I'm prejudiced because I'm sitting down on the hold out here, is that uh, my next priority would be up at uh, Daniel Heights. Because mm -hmm. uh, from up there, you can go, I think, most anywhere if you put enough power behind it. <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, or, or go another 40 feet higher. Yeah. The more you're talking, you know, 100 footer. Yeah. Okay. Um, you'd have to get a variance because the lot is not big enough huh? to swallow a 100 foot tower. So 110 and feet is not enough. Unless it's a freestander. Yeah. The guy is the problem. Yeah, okay. And the neighbors, for freestander, you need 60 of 100. So, yeah, it would fit as far as in the center of the lot falling if you had a monofold. Right. Um, yeah, he's got, also he's in got the five park. lots going up the road. Yeah. There's there's one last thing you got to check with. It's the state and the federal... Oh. What is you know, Jude, you put it up, and somebody says to you, you know how long it took to get the permit? And go, oh, man. <laughs> they would never know. They would never know you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. Man, it took us three years to get that permit. Wow. Yeah, let me go get a copy of it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot it this time. Yeah. I'll bring exactly. it back. <laughs> well, there is, when in my the research for putting up a tower in Herman, there's some things that need to be taken care of. Obviously, you do need to have a building inspection and all that good stuff. Because you're dealing with some power, you got to have an electrical inspector. Um, you're, if you go beyond a certain height, you got to have lights. Well, that's well up in the 195 plus range. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, mm -hmm. you know, with the airport being relatively close, there's going to be a lot more variables involved than what uh, Herman might be. Mm -hmm. But there's a website called Tau Air. On it's still F outside of the contour. You're right. on the far side of Calumet. Right, That's no mm -hmm. but there is a few uh, things in the FCC's website that will it'll give you kind of the baseline if you know if there's a problem or a red flag it'll mm -hmm. indicate right then and there. Yeah. So for the most part, it's just your building inspection and your your other avenue there. Yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta run. Gotta take that. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming down. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Well,